Hey tribe, welcome to the HGDC, HG Designs Crochet Channel. I'm Heather, your host. I'm 28 and I live in Leicester in the United Kingdom. Today I am going to be showing you how I organise my patterns. Um, this was a question that was um, asked of me in my question answer for 100 subscribers and I said I would make that into its own little vlog. So here we go. Um, I have a really simple organisational system um, for my physical patterns um, and then I have an organisational system for downloads as well. Um, so starting with the physical patterns, I've got this folder which is actually getting quite heavy um, it's just a simple Wilkinson's display book um, and it's just got all of these plastic wallets within it. Um, I know some people use lever arch files, I know my nanny does, um, a couple of other people I know do and they just put the plastic wallets in. Um, some people use box files, um, it's entirely up to you. I like my display pocket book. Um, it's got 40 pages, um, so that should mean 40 patterns, though I think I will start to do them double-sided, so 80 patterns. Um, it's quite a wedge, to be honest, considering that I've only started knitting garments, crocheting garments, in the last, well, I started socks two years ago, and I started, I did my first jumper, about a month ago. I've got a lot of patterns. Um, so if we open it up, I could just show you some of the patterns I've got in here. Speckled Space Socks by Amanda B. Stevens. Um, I started them and then got bored. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't carry on. Um, so anything that I print off from Ravelry goes in here anything that anybody gives me so sometimes um, if I see somebody working on a pattern and I say I like it they'll give me a copy um, and that all goes in here then I also bought the crochet sock collection by Vix Brown um, and I asked for the PDF collection because the physical copy was in the post and I wanted to get started straight away I haven't made a pair yet um, so that's in there, then I've got fingerless mitts which I was given, I think that was by Isabel maybe gave me those, um, she's English lady spinner, and then we've got a lot of, I know my mum doesn't like it when I say vintage, but these are vintage, retro, old patterns from her stash and from charity shops. I um, did a vlog on my charity shop haul and I showed you those patterns. Um, I'll make sure I link it after this so you can go back and look um, in a bit more detail. But I picked up patterns such as this one. Um, and I mean, I really like that. And now that I've got my circular knitting needles, I could totally do this. Um, it calls for DK. That's all DK. Um, how cool is that? It cost me a pound. Um, I was having this conversation with my grandmother the other day because on some of her patterns that she's lent me, they say things such as five pence five pence but back then that would have been quite a lot of money so um but some of them were in like shillings which is a really old currency so that's how you know that that pattern's old um i can call that one vintage right there's all sorts in here so i went into loros i think it was um charity shop and found all sorts of these patterns 
um, and I just love some ones in the back. It makes me want to track some of them down on eBay and get them, you know, because I don't have enough patterns to work on. This one's gorgeous. Um, it's a mohair sunbeam pattern. Um, I mean, I could probably wear that at work, I think. I've got quite a conservative job role. If I did that in grey. Um, and yes, there's just so many patterns in here. So anything that I'm, I've am i bought or copied or printed is in my pocketbook display. Oh, silly me. Um, then I also have various um, magazines. Now I have got two, I hope this doesn't wobble the table, magazine files like this, just out of shot. You will see it in my thumbnail picture. Um, and the, these have got all sorts of magazines, like these crochet ones that my brother kindly got for me. Um, then I've got, put these all back in. Um, I've got cross stitch, I've got all sorts. But all my magazines are in um, the magazine holders. Um, sometimes I do find it frustrating because you forget what you've got because you you can't easily see it but then I don't want to go through and catalogue it so I just have to get on with it um, and then I've got a lot of crochet and knitting magazines um, this one I pulled out because it's got the pleated cardigan that I so desperately want to make and I keep saying I'm going to make it I haven't made it you haven't seen me make it that's really nice. Um, that would definitely be office appropriate. Um, and again, what else have we got here? Oh, my knitting magazines. So I've got Debbie Bliss. <laughs> Darcy's just running backwards and forwards. Just bear with me a minute. So I've got Debbie Bliss and all sorts of knitting magazines in here. Um, I have just been addicted to Debbie Bliss's patterns and yarn. Now I've never made anything with them, so maybe that's something I should do. But just look at that. That is super warm, super cozy. It's called Snug as a Bug and it's moss stitch. And I have a thing for moss stitch at the moment. Um yeah. It's it's knitting luxury tweed chunky. Oh, so yes, um, lots of knitting magazines with lots of pattern ideas and again I kind of don't realise what I've got and some of the pages I've gone through and marked what I want to make, I've folded the corners over and others I haven't and I literally, I don't have a clue what I've got. So. This could do with, oh that's pretty, I could do with a little bit more organisation on these but I know where they all are and I, when I'm looking for inspiration, I do look through these but I do reach for Pinterest or Ravelry first um, and I need to get in the habit of checking what I have in all of these beautiful magazines really like this cable detail sweater um see the only thing with debbie bliss is it says 50 gram balls of debbie bliss glen in wild rose 0012 what what weight is that because she's got her own category it's so difficult to swap out you have to go and research which is such a such a pain um though it does call for six mil needles so i'd say that's a chunky or an aaron um, but yeah, that's lovely. Um, and I mean, there's just so many wonderful patterns. I am definitely a pattern magpie. I don't know about anybody else. I find that the inspiration they give me can lead to me making other patterns um, or 
say in my head I want to construct a pair of mittens and I've got a pattern in mind I can use something in here um, and add in the pattern so there's this big chill shawl say I wanted to make something similar um, I could probably take the sleeves and you know mold it into what I want so I find that really useful for construction um, what else is in here <laughs> lots of crochet and knitting magazines it makes me want to every now and then I will get them all out I spread them all out all over the floor open on patterns that I want to make um, just gets your brain going a little bit so I'll put these back quickly there is another Debbie Bliss magazine that I absolutely adore I wonder where I've hidden that um, yes that is the majority of my knitting magazines and then that just leaves things that I've borrowed so I've borrowed patterns off my grandmother. What I would do with these is I'm going to photocopy them and then they're going to go into my pocketbook. Um, I think with the pocketbook I could do with reorganising it so that it's got um, all the socks together, all the jumpers, all the cardigans or maybe even in weight, yarn weight. Um, so I might sit there with my pocketbook, put some put someone else's podcast on and organize those um, just so it just so it appeals a bit more to me um, let me quickly show you some of the new patterns I'm going to be copying and this is a sunbeam um, jumper I don't know what they've called it let me look sweater in sunbeam a double knitting quite simply um, and it calls a four a double knitting and I just love the whole style I can see me rocking that. Um, so I'm going to copy that so that I can give it a go at some point. Um, it asks for three and, a, three and a quarter mil needles for the rib and four mil for the body. Um, and it says 50 gram balls, 12, 13, 14, 14. And I would want, what size would I be? I usually end up in a small size anyway, so 12 gram, uh, sorry, 12 50 gram balls, 600 grams. Um, do I have 600 grams of DK? Well, obs. Do I have 600 grams in the same cut in one solid colour? Um. I think it, you need a lighter colour for that to show up the pattern and I don't have that in quantity so I'll just have to get some more, it's such a problem. Um, then I've got this Jaeger, it's um, a silk cardigan and camisole, and there's the camisole. Um, just something a bit different, again office wear. I um, really like this jumper to the point where I am tempted to do this. What do you reckon? But then I want to make some my own pattern out of this. <sighs> the dilemma. Um, so this uses a DK tweed and this is Aaron but it's got that variation on it. Um, and because it's Aaron and this calls for DK, I would just go for the smaller size. Um, da, 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 smaller size garment. Oh, hang on. As I was saying before Darcy asked to come back in, I could do the smaller size, but in the Aaron, and hopefully it would fit me. That's my plan. Um, I quite like these sweaters. The pink doesn't really show up very well, but it's got this pattern. Um, I'd like to give that a go. That's in chunky. I do have chunky yarn. And then also this his and her sweater pattern. 
That's so cute. <laughs> um, and I love the little Scottish tartan. So I'd like to give that a go. That again is, I was in a DK tweed. It just gives it that subtle. But I have seen some nice DK tweed. So again, I could always go get that. Um, then the only other thing I have organisation wise is my books. So I borrowed this one at the moment um, just so I can copy a few out um, and give a few a try. There's some really great um, stitches in here like the disappearing cable and yes it's pink but look at that um then i will give that back so that's just sitting on the table at the moment but on the bookshelf which i'm going to take you over to see i have got a stack of um knitting crochet making books and again they all have patterns in that i can refer to um I don't, again, I don't 100% know what's in them, and um, short of cataloguing it, I'm not entirely sure how I would keep on top of that, unless maybe I go into Ravelry and find them and add them in there, and then add them into my library, I don't know. Um, but sometimes, as I said, when I'm looking for inspiration, I gather all of this stuff around me, and I go through everything and I pull all the books off, I get the magazines out and I go through and I've got certain yarns I know I want to make certain things and I, I will look through all of my project, all of my patterns, sorry. So whether that be printed um, in this pocket book, in my magazine stacks or in my books and then I leave pages open, I write down bits I think I might want to tweak and use and then I crack on um, and also I then have to say that I've got a lot of digital patterns I think that's quite true for a lot of us makers now we must all buy them online well majority of us um, and so I have them all in my hard drive you have to be quite disciplined to do it but I hate not be able to find something where I want it or you know I just like to have them all quite neat. Um, so I have within my hard drive its own little folder for patterns and if I download something on my Mac I just put it onto that bit of my hard drive and it's all there and that's got socks and it's got god knows what in it. If say for example I've been on Love Knitting or the Rowan website or any website with a free pattern and I've downloaded the free pattern and sometimes I know that I probably won't make it for six months a year I mean, I've got all these and I'm probably never going to get around to making every single one. But if it's a free pattern and there's an aspect I like, I will download it because I might use that in another project. Um, so yes, I've got a lot on my hard drive. Um, that actually feels more organised than these sometimes, especially the magazines, because... I can just rename the pattern icon and it's got the picture when I scroll, you know, when I scroll down um, or across so I can see what's there at a glance whereas here you have to physically get your book out and have a look um, but that's got its own pleasure so I don't really mind. Um, now I feel like I'm rambling and you, you, you don't need to hear that. Um, I also just want to add in that I help organise my crochet through my planners which you can see here. I've got a crochet journal and I did a vlog all about that so I will link that for you and um, that just helps me to keep sort of track of projects a bit like a real life um, Ravelry so I will put the yarn bands in there and I will put um, what size needles, the pattern, where the pattern's from um, and then if I've done any tweaks. I now also have a bullet journal and as I carry that around a lot more it has a lot more of my patterns that I've made myself and my tweaks so go check that out if you want to see how I keep my actual crochet organised. Um, if you've got any pattern organisation tips then let me know 
Um, and if you feel there's any free patterns out there that I have to have to have, hook a girl up. So that is everything for now. I just want to say thank you to all of you for subscribing. Thank you for spending this time with me. If you could give this a thumbs up, that would be great. I hope you have a lovely afternoon, evening, or whatever time of day, night, whatever it is where you are. Happy making, take care, and I will see you again soon. Bye.